Hey, Tacoma Comics here, and if you want to see a bunch of random top number ones from my collection, stay tuned. Okay, we're going to start off with stealth buys. Now, we need to define what is a stealth buy is when you buy something and the owner should have known better. Um, oftentimes you, you get these- don't tell your wife. No, that's a different type of stealth buy. That's a stealth purchase when you like hide it. But there are some of those. <laughs> a stealth buy is when you go into the comic book shop and you find that dollar book that's worth hundreds. Usually it's not a comic book shop unless the comic book owner doesn't know what they're doing. Usually it's a second hand shop. It's a multimedia store. It's a Goodwill. It's a half price. Um, and I got a few, I got a few stealth buys this uh, this year. So let's take a look. Um, and this is in no particular order, but they all are thematic. First up, the Forces of Destiny, Ahsoka and Padme. This particular cover is the animation cell cover, and these are I think were one in one hundreds. Uh, this one and I think the lay one go for about a hundred dollars now. I picked this up at cover price like seven ninety nine. dollars uh, So pretty excited about that. One of the places where I usually get my mystery packs, um, I happened to pick up this book when it was like, a, I picked it up for like a dollar when it was, you know, a $40 book. Now it is a through the roof book. I am regretting selling my newsstand even though it was super ticked up because that is even further through the roof and um the last stealth buy that i have to show you and i got two of these i'm going to go back to the place see if he's got more because they go into his dollar bins is star wars number one jedi versus sith this is the first appearance of darth bane darth bane one of the darths um that everybody is banking on i got this for a dollar as well and this is a book that has gone through the roof and my final stealth buy of this year is gone and missing. Why? Because I already sold it. <laughs> but I did pick up this book, which I'm going to try to put right here, where Nathaniel just walked by. And that is Next Men 21, first appearance of Hellboy. First color appearance, first full appearance, first something like that. But uh, I got that for a dollar two at one of those places where um, they didn't know any better. So. Those are my top stealth buys of 2020. Okay, next up, we have the best comic ever sold to me by the artists themselves. <laughs> That's a, a category that I um, tailored individually to things that happened this year. And uh, what happened this year was COVID and it sucked. And we were inside for long periods of time. And back in the spring, my school did not have a plan so i had very little to do this year they've done a hugely um better job but really nothing to do so uh i started to hit up stephanie hans on instagram she had posted a bunch of books that she was selling to try to raise money for the bink mm -hmm. foundation that's the book something like it's a, a, a foundation that supports independent bookstores and comic book shops they were raising money for comic book shops i'm like i'm all in on that and uh her auction for some of her signed books just went through the roof I could not afford it so I hit her up on IG I'm like I couldn't afford those but I was interested in this and we actually went back and forth she's like oh I had no idea she had no idea some of her covers were like so popular and and, and um especially the ratio variants were so sought after so I was kind of excited that I got to like give her some information about that um and what she did is she she came back to me she's like I've got this one I've got this one she goes I'm not parting with this one that was the journey to mystery 633 variant Still don't have that one. I want that book. Um, but she did uh, have a bunch of books, and I made her an offer in in cash. Um, and then I also said, I'll give you this much, and then I'll also donate this much to the Bink Foundation. And she said, cool. So she sent me um, the one big book uh, that I wanted, and that is Fearless Defenders right here. One in four, signed, of course. Uh, sorry, not one in four, no, issue four variant. I believe this is a one in 50 variant, if I'm not mistaken. Um, just a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. I hope that my camera is doing it 
justice. I hope that you're seeing it well. I hope that the light is not playing too much havoc, but just a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Um, there's not much more I can say about that. I'm super happy. She also sent like five other books that were on my list of books I did not have. I told her to surprise me too. It wasn't like, um, it wasn't like I said, uh, you know, I want X, Y, Z. I just, she had seen my list of books I'm missing of hers and she chose. So everything I got from hers was really great. Thank you, Stephanie. I really appreciate it. Next up on our list, we have best uh, purchases from the YouTube comic book community. And both of these purchases I'm really excited about uh, because they both came about unexpectedly. Um, out of the blue, Dressier's Comics. Dressier's name is Richard. Dressier is Richard backwards. Took me a year to understand that. Not understand, but to figure that out or be told that because I never figured it out. Um, he hit me up and he saw my Hans video last year. Um, I think I did like my top 50 Hans covers or something or top 20 Hans covers. Uh, he saw it last year and I, I mentioned the, the big ones I don't have. And at the time it was Fearless Defenders 4. It was Journey into Mystery 633 variant and it was the Black Widow 2 smoking gun variant. And he said, you know, I got a really um, nice, I don't know if it was slabbed or not, but he's like, I got a really nice copy of this. Before I put the other one up on eBay, I, I thought I'd offer it to you um, because I know that you're a big fan. I know that you'll appreciate it. So I said, absolutely, I'll appreciate it. And so we negotiated what I think was a more than fair price. And I'm just going to let you look at that for a second. And I believe this was in January. So I believe that this counts as uh, just going to hold those two up together. But I believe that this counts as 20, a 2020 purchase. If this was prior to 2020, I don't apologize for putting it in here. Um, but yeah, that's, that's oh my gosh, just such a cool, cool cover. All right, less is more sometimes. And I just love that. Now, the other one happened in about May. I think it was on Kavi's channel. He was having a Star Wars celebration to celebrate like this time that Star Wars celebration would normally be taking place. And uh, everybody's showing off Star Wars stuff and Star Wars stuff. And at the time, he had no Star Wars toys. But he did have a Star Wars number one in a 9.2. Um, and he had an upgrade or he was in the process of getting an upgrade. So I was able to exchange cash and toys in exchange for this and the the price that he gave me um this is just more than worth it more than worth it he really 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 gave me a good deal on this and i am super super happy for that and super appreciative of that so thank you very much kavi thank you very much Trasir. i really treasure these two um they're in my pc forever forever and ever and ever all right, so next category we have is the top newsstand book that I have in my collection. Now, newsstands have been getting a lot of information recently, and I'm not going to go into history of newsstands, why they're big. You, you can research that, figure it out, make your own decisions. Here's what I will tell you. If you like collecting later year newsstands, um, you know, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to 14, that's great. They're rare, but they're probably not worth much unless it's a hot book already. I mean, if you want to get into newsstands, get into newsstands of already hot books. Um, and so this one, unfortunately, has a few ticks. Actually, I can't see them, but I know it does have some ticks. And could use a press, but it's probably like a 9.0 or 9.2. And is a 2012 newsstand, a book that was pretty hot earlier this year. And maybe it's cooled off a bit. But this is Spider-Man number one, the first meeting of Peter Parker and Miles Morales and you and Miles Morales' crotch. Um, yeah, they, uh, they, they, they made no bones about that one in this, <laughs> this cover. Um, so just a, a, a good book, a good solid book. You know, Miles is on the ascendancy and people love everything Miles. But if you look down here, this is the newsstand that was on display sometime in June or July of 2012. And that makes this book super rare. According to Marvel and research people have done, Marvel was not 
sending books out to anywhere other than like Barnes and Noble, maybe some other bookstores. So um, at the, at this point, so very very rare um, and and definitely a book to have and a book to keep in my PC. Um, book I'm really proud of too because that was also self buy, but I didn't put that in the self buy buy category because I wanted to put it in this category. Moving along on the list, what we have next is the best indie series that I haven't read yet. And that, no doubt, goes to Autumnal. This is supposed to be a really good series. I haven't had time to open it yet. I can't wait to read it because I've got the Virgin variant of number two. I've got the Foil variant of number one. Got the regular variant of number one. So I've got a really nice start to the series if I actually enjoy it. I just haven't had time to read it. Perhaps I should stop making videos and go read some comics. Oh well. Next category is my worst slapping experience of 2020, which is also my worst slapping experience of all time because I don't slap books. I slapped this book for a very particular reason. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 4. I had a copy of this that I got super cheap and sold. I found this one in half price for $50 with a Stanley signature on and a COA. And so I've always wanted a Stanley signature. Of course, I'd love a Ditko and a Kirby signature too. Um, but this is just something that's a little bit more prevalent because he signed a lot of books in his later years. And I really wanted to get one. So I found this. I said $50 for uh, Amazing Spider-Man 4 First Silk with a uh, Stanley Sig. No brainer, right? Um it does, if you look right where the white meets the um, meets the color there above the R and rated, there was a blemish. And I knew there was a blemish. I knew this was not going to be high grade. Um, I was hoping for a 9.0. I got an 8.5, and I'm okay with that uh, because it's it's a pretty significant blemish. They said uh, in the, the, the notes... Um, for graders' notes in this book, please visit cbscomics.com, um, CBS, cbcscomics.com. And when I did that, um, they said slight spine wear, which I really can't see because um, I did have them press it. But then they also referenced the, uh, the, the blemish over here. But let me show you, excuse me a second, what they did when they slapped this because it drives me crazy. The blemish looked like somebody had taken a paper clip and kind of stuck a hole through it like that. Right? But then the paper here, when they slabbed it, they could have folded it down. Instead, they slabbed it with that ripped paper folded, folded open. And that ticks me off. I sent it off in February just before COVID start shut everything down. It took eight months to get back in an 8.5 slabbed poorly. That's why it looks so bad. It could look just like a, a, no, that's the wrong one. It could look just like a pinprick hole. Instead, it's open. And that just really, really irks me. That little flap right there could be folded across this and you would hardly notice it and so cb cbcs comics you suck that's all i've got to say excuse me nathaniel but they do that is my worst slapping experience of 2020 all right coming down towards the end this is top book in my collection that i didn't know was as hot as it was so this is champions number one from 2014 mark wade um writing and this is a partial sketch variant, but apparently this was when Marvel was going like ridiculous with the variants. Um, your store had to purchase not just a certain number of issue one to get this. Your store also had to purchase a certain number of other issues and other titles in order to get this. So very few stores at the time were ordering that many to get this variant. So. If you ever come across this uh, for cheap, definitely pick it up. Definitely a hard book to find because there just aren't that many of them out there because there weren't that many stores ordering um, all those different books in order to get this one. 
moving right along, almost getting to the end. Next up, we have the best ongoing independent series. And for the best ongoing independent series, no surprise there if you know me, it's Die. And this time, um, this arc is the third arc, The Great Game. Uh, it's been said by a lot of people that Die sort of loses, it, it, it sort of devolves away or diverts away from the plot, right? Or what seems like the main plot. Um, it did a nice reference to Tolkien in the first arc. In the second arc, it might have gone too deep into the Bronte sisters, um, depending on your, your predilection. For me, it felt like that a little bit. Um, but it always comes back together, and it always reads better as a trait. And nothing is true of this. Uh, I felt some of the books in this. I was like, okay, and there was a long wait between the books, maybe due to COVID. Um, and so I, I lost the way a little bit, but reading this all together as a trade, holy cow, it's phenomenal. Um, the stuff that they go through is phenomenal. Um, if you haven't read Die yet, I, I can't, I can't express enough how gorgeous the artwork is, how strong the story is. Stephanie Hans is just at her best and just playing around in like, you know, explosions and creatures and fantasy tropes and, oh, it's just amazing. Um, the stuff that happened with the Grief Knight and Matt in this um, arc was great. And what really saved, even reading in single issues, what saved this for me was the final issue. Issue 15, holy cow. That is, um, that knocked me on my feet. That was great. So I highly, highly suggest picking up Die in Trade if you have not already read it. If you haven't already read it, I don't know where you've been, but definitely get on it. All righty, going to try to end this video with a bang. Um, I just realized I forgot one book. All right, I'm going to edit that out so you won't even hear me saying that. Okay, coming down towards the end, we have my two top eBay purchases of the year where I actually spent the money because I couldn't find them on the cheap. Uh, one of them, which I definitely made a good decision on, one of them, which I probably could have waited a year and it would have gone down, but I was greedy and not really fomo we just, just wanted it now, sort of-y. Um, so the first one, no, I'll show this one. Uh, this is the Babs Tar 1 in 50 variant for Magnificent Miss Marvel. Maybe 1 in 100? I don't know. I absolutely love this cover. I Just, just to die for. Um, Babs Tar has done two Miss Marvel's covers. She did a variant to, for number three that of the original G. Willow Wilson run. That was amazing. And now she's done this one. And um, just love it. I just love this iteration of Kamala. Um, you know, I, I paid about ratio for this. So didn't really get this on the cheap or get this as a self-buy. Uh, but I'm really glad I picked it up. The other one is a book that's been on my radar forever. Uh, finally found a decent price, still expensive, but a decent price, sold a bunch of books in order to be able to afford this one. Uh, this is Miss Marvel number two, the one in 50 variant from 2014 cover by Jorge Molina. So a couple things going on here. First of all, nobody had an idea that Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, was going to take off. G. Willow Wilson said that she felt like she would, she would be lucky if she got to 10 issues um, before they canceled it. It took off. It took off in a big way. Very few stores ordered a lot of issue two. Very, very few stores ordered enough issue twos, 50 of them, to get a 1 in 50 variant for issue two. So this has always been a hard book to find. There just aren't that many of them out there. Um, in addition, it's just a classic, like everything about Miss Marvel, especially when she began, is there. Uh, despite the fact that the scarf is going up and the hair isn't, we'll just say that's her super powers, keeping her hair down. Uh, the kind of, you know, first of all, it's suburban New Jersey, right? So she's on top of a roof in a suburban place, school bus, clearly she's school age, um, hands on their hip, looking really defiant and powerful and strong and blowing a bubble, 
with bubblegum. Clearly, she's still a kid. Like, everything is there to set the tone for who and what she is. And so this is my top eBay purchase of 2020. Miss Marvel number two, the Jorge Molina, one in 50 variant. Final book on my list came in this past October uh, in a year that many of us will uh, want to forget or will remember as being particularly crappy. Uh, I did get some fine books and none finer than the birthday present from my mom and my wife combined. I had a copy of this. Uh, the cover was detached. This one is probably a good 6.0, maybe 6.5. Very, very happy to have X-Men 94, the second appearance of Storm and Colossus and Nightcrawler and Banshee, or is Banshee early? I can't remember. And the third appearance of Wolverine, if you don't count 180 and 182. Um, so yeah, very, very excited here. Um, this is really nice. You know, I finished my Claremont run this year. I wanted to make sure that I had all of them in decent grade, if not high grade. I think I need to upgrade 113. That's the only one I've got that's like below a 5.0. Otherwise, I've got 94 through 279, all in decent or really good condition. So thanks, Mom. Thanks, Karen. I now have uh, X-Men 94 in a really nice condition. So there is my random varied top list of 2020. Goodbye to a crappy year and welcome to 2021. Thanks everybody for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like this, go ahead and hit the like thingy. And if you didn't like this, don't push the like thingy. And if you're not subscribed, then I don't know how you found my video anyway, but go ahead and subscribe if you want. And if I personally offend you, go ahead and unsubscribe.